Hey guys, it's Car Guy 11 I have the just released 2022 Jeep Grand Cherokee. This one's a Summit Reserve, top of the line model, almost fully loaded, about $71,000. But it does have the Hemi V8 in this one. I previously reviewed the Grand Cherokee L, which is the three row version. This of course is the two row version. And that L is about a foot longer than this one. So very excited to get into the fifth generation Grand Cherokee. It's over a decade old, the previous gen. It's about four inches longer than the previous gen and about two inches longer wheelbase. So you do get some extra room in that second row. So thanks to Dion Robinson here, I'm gonna review it for you guys. We'll take it for a drive and see how that V8 runs. I'll put their info below if you're interested in this vehicle as they just received it. Alright guys, getting out of the cold and getting into the new Grand Cherokee. It's a super luxurious place to be. This is of course the top of the line model. You have real wood trim all over. You have the very soft Palermo leather, heated seats, heated steering wheel, massaging seats. And as far as the power adjustments go, even the, the side bolsters tighten up. Of course, the adjustable lumbar support, and it has an extending seat thigh cushion as well up front. So very nice there. Then of course you have your 10 inch Uconnex touchscreen system, very responsive, has a lot of different adjustments, vehicle adjustments, etc. And new for 22, there's a passenger side touchscreen. So the passenger can control the radio, the navigation, they could play their own media, and it does have some hookups here in the center console. Um, this one doesn't have the rear screens, but they could also adjust what the rear screens are watching. Of course, you have your huge panoramic sunroof that is all power, and it has a shade, which is nice. But you have good storage space in the center console as well. It's pretty deep. And you have a bottle storage in the door even. Now this does have the rotary dial for the shifter, which it does fall easy to hand and it is metal. So it's very premium feeling. All right, let's take off in the V8 Hemi powered Grand Cherokee. You have your beautiful surround cam system, very high resolution. You can change the angles. Your backup camera is also a video monitor. So tons of screens in this vehicle. Oh yeah, oh wow, tons of torque out of this V8. This is a 5.7 liter Hemi pushrod V8. It's 357 horsepower, 390 pound-feet of torque. So that's a huge improvement over the standard Pentastar V6. The V6 only has 292 horsepower and 260 pound-feet of torque. So a ton more torque and you feel it. And that was one of the things I wasn't thrilled about in the L. It, it did feel lazy. Now this two row is about 250 pounds lighter than the three row. So that is nice because of course it's a foot shorter. Uh, it's still at about 4,800 pounds though, so it's, it's no lightweight. Oh yeah. From a stop, no problem, it moves, and you got a beautiful exhaust note to boot, so sounds way better than the six cylinder. I really think the Hemi's the way to go. You are going to have a fuel penalty. It's 17 miles per gallon combined. But, you know, this is probably your last time you're going to be able to get a V8 in a vehicle like this. Uh, everything's moving towards electric and including the Grand Cherokee. Now, the two-row is going to be available with the 4xe plug-in hybrid system. And that's going to be an interesting powertrain combination. I hope to review that one when it comes out later this year. But I did review the... Wrangler with that powertrain and it was it was pretty interesting. So definitely stay tuned for that one and subscribe if you haven't. The steering wheel even has wood on it and of course it's heated. Now this also has paddle shifters on the steering wheel. <laughs> 
but the V8, man, it, it just moves. It's quick to shift down the eight speed automatic, very responsive. And I'm just in auto mode right now, which is the normal setting. It does have sport and you have your off-road snow, sand, mud, and rock. Well, sand or snow, I guess, is not so much off-road, but. Last time I did test the advanced safety systems. Um, this one, of course, has it. The top of the line models do have the highway driving assist. Now, later this summer, the Grand Cherokee is supposed to get a hands-free driving option, which will be awesome. I can't wait to test that one. But for now, you do have to keep your hands on the wheel but it does do the lane centering and that's only in the upper trims, the overland and above. We'll put it in sport right now, which also adjusts this air suspension. So the suspension on this uh, travels up and down and it also adjusts the firmness of the dampers. So the previous generation only adjusted the ride height, not the damping. So that's pretty cool. You could also manually override the damping with this console mounted selector. Let's pull out here pretty quick. Yeah, four wheel drive system, no problem, no slip. This system has the ability to disconnect the front axle for fuel savings and I didn't feel any slip there. Now the temperature is in the 30 degrees. So usually these systems have programs that, you know, they, they will stay in four wheel drive at lower temperatures and uh, other conditions such as your drive mode, your, if your wipers are on, etc. So that's good though. I didn't feel any kind of slip there. And of course you have your off-road chops. I mean, you have low range four wheel drive with a button down here and this of course is full-time full roll drive but you can put it in a low range for off-roading very few suvs have that feature nowadays now there is a trailhawk model that even has a disconnecting sway bar this one of course doesn't have it and that would be for off-road use now again with this summit reserve we're running 21 inch wheels which is the largest wheels and 275 uh, tires uh, this is the largest wheels available and it's only on the summit top of the line summit reserve model the sport mode definitely holds revs and it's still pretty comfortable Again, the V8, I think, is the engine to get in this. Now, the V6 in the two row would probably run, feel a little bit better because it's a little bit less weight. The steering does firm up in the sport mode. Definitely can feel that. But the suspension doesn't get too rough. It really doesn't, even in sport mode. Brakes feel nice and powerful, and I did get a downshift there, which is excellent. Uh, when I was heavy braking. The digital gauge cluster is very nice. So many customization features. You can even have your map, full map on there. You can have digital gauges, you can have analog gauges, the temperatures, anything you want. So very nice there. It all. This top of line model also has a heads up display and that'll show navigation, your speed, speed limit, Yeah, no problem with that four-wheel drive kicking in. It's nice to have that V8 burble when you're just cruising around. But it's nice and quiet in here as well. And the ride is very smooth. It does feel like a big vehicle though, I'm not gonna lie. Uh, these vehicles are very wide and it's actually even wider than the previous gen by an inch. These feel more like the full-size SUVs than the mid-size, in my opinion. But you get used to it. And because you only have two rows of seats, you have a ton of room, ton of cargo room in back. You still have a spare tire as well. And you have your subwoofer for this awesome sounding Macintosh stereo. You also have some power outlets back there. 
and I have plenty of room in the second row of seats. I fit, it fit easily, and it has a ton of air vents, uh, heating and cooling, and you have a bunch of jacks for your charging, your phone and everything. The seats are rather firm. Also, everything is soft padded, the doors, even in the back, uh, the dash, everything is premium materials, but again, that is because this is the fully loaded version. Now, the only non-premium surface on this vehicle is the piano black in the center console. Uh, I'm not thrilled that they have that because it will scratch easily and get dirty, but you can open the lids and, and limit that. Just leave those lids open because you have your wireless charging anyway in here and cup holders in the other one. So really you don't need to expose it. Honestly, I'd rather them thus not have the lids at all, but everything else is very premium. Even the headliner is a suede and the seats have that quilted leather, very upscale. This is definitely playing towards the luxury end. Now these Grand Cherokees do start in the lower 40 so you don't have to go crazy with options uh, of course you're going to get a lot of the less premium features this one even has night vision so don't have to go all out and get the seventy thousand dollar one but it's a very nice vehicle though it's a leap above the previous generation but tell me in the comments below do you have a Grand Cherokee and have you been waiting for this one to be refreshed? It's a very popular vehicle. I think you're going to be pretty happy with the updates they've made. It is a little bit more expensive, but uh, you know, a lot of engineering has gone behind it uh, to update it. So I have a huge thanks to Deal for letting me review this vehicle. I will put their link below if you want to check out this one or any of the new ones that they get in. But anyway, guys, Thanks very much for watching. Please give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't, and I'll see you in the next video.